one spar in Bridlington upon Twin. Your first stop for relaxation, therapy and assorted treatments from the Cosmopolitan Care Clinique Colour Collection. We have a comprehensive selection of state-of-the-art equipment, including tanning bed, sauna, jacuzzi, bathing pool and vibrating chairs. And if you're still feeling tense, with our trained masseuse we have an appropriately soft touch to help you relax here at Hummingbird House. My name is Denise, how may I be of assistance today? <laughs> okay, thank you. Wrong number. <laughs> It was implemented a couple of months back after a blue sky thinking management meeting. What's one of them? No idea. <laughs> I think it's just one of those meetings the management likes to have because they can order a buffet and company expenses and they go home early. Anyway, don't worry. I've written it all down for you so you can't get it wrong. So much to take in. But it's always like that when you start somewhere new. You'll soon get the hang of it though. Besides, I'll be here to keep an eye on you. Have you worked anywhere like this before? Geraldine said you had experience. Well, kind of. I worked in a beauty spa a while back, but it wasn't as nice as this. Even so, that's perfect experience. How long did you work there for? Only a day. <laughs> that's all? <laughs> Didn't much like it then? No, I got fired. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it could have been a number of things, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> but I think this clinch was setting off the fire alarm. It's a completely honest mistake, but it didn't go down very well at all. It really didn't. I felt so stupid. What happened? I saw smoke and we just panicked. Hit the alarm and we had to clear the building. Everyone had to stand outside in their robes. <coughs> I told us why we gave where I'd seen the smoke, but well, they just said that it was uh, only the steam room. <laughs> you set off the fire alarm because you saw steam coming out of the steam roof. Well, I didn't know it was a steam room. It was only my first day. Fire brigade was lovely though. Thankfully, I don't think they recognised me. I'd actually seen most of them before from the time I worked in that big catering company in the town centre. <laughs> they were prepping up for a wedding and the starter course was smoked fish. They had this room they referred to as the smoking room, but I never put two and two together. Just thought they went in there for cigarette breaks. So, the day before the wedding, I saw smoke coming out from underneath the door. Oh no, I think I can see where this is going. I just panicked. Hit the alarm and the fire brigade wouldn't take any chances. Went in there with hoses on full blast. Apparently it ruined five whole trout, three trays of salmon, several trays of haddock and half the suckling pig that the boss was doing for his son's birthday barbecue. Muggins here got the blame for it. Well, you can kind of see why. Please don't tell me that was your first day as well. <laughs> oh, good grief, no. No, I don't normally get fired on my first day. I was at that one for nearly a week and a half. <laughs> well, you can put all that behind you. I'm absolutely sure that you'll fit in fine here. Some of the equipment takes a bit of getting used to, but other than that, it's mostly straightforward. We've got a few regulars as well. Some of them are a bit quirky, but you'll soon get to know them. So, who have we got in today then? Well, let's take a look, shall we? This is the booking system here, look. You click on today's date, and it brings up a list of all the clients for that day. Go on, you do it. So, who have we got? Um, Mr E Shuttleworth. Ah yes, good old Mr Shuttleworth. He's a very pompous type, very well to do on the face of it, but actually he's a total perv. He's always accidentally bumping into you and the like. Just have to ignore his nonsense. Who else? Um, <laughs> Mr G Buchanan. Oh, that's more like it. He's one of my favourites. Former football player, you know, tall, good looking chap, quite the charmer. You have to take him with a pinch of salt sometimes, but it's totally harmless. Anyone else? Um, Mrs F Middlewitch. Oh, I've forgotten she was in today. She's a nasty piece of work. She puts the witch in Middlewitch. Think <laughs> Cruella de Vil, but with less style. Unfortunately, she's the one who does the online reviews. So sadly, whatever happens, you need to be nice to her. Mrs Middlewitch, be nice. Got it. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I'm ready. Me do it. Of course you are, just read the script. <sighs> my eyesight isn't very good. I didn't want to wear my glasses on my first day. If I'm right, you'll be fine. Give it a go. Here, just read from the script. Oh God. Okay. Good morning or afternoon. Delete as a principal. <laughs> this is a hummingbird course. The finest beauty and wellness spa in Burlington upon Twill. 
your first shop for relationship therapy and assorted treats from the cosmic carpet clitic clock collection. <laughs> I'm getting it wrong. You're panicking. Just relax. Take your time. Okay. We have a, a comprehensive selection of state-of-the-art equipment, including tanning beds, sauna, Suzuki, bathing pool and vibrating chairs. And if you're still feeling tense with our trained machete, we have an incredible <laughs> soft touch to help you relax here at Hummingbird Horse. I think I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> My name is, insert name here. <laughs> How many <laughs> old reruns of Friends and the complete DVD box set of Sex and the City, whilst eating Ben and Jerry's caramel choo-choo straight out of the tub. Oh. It was perfect. Sounds it. <laughs> Hello, you must be the new girl. I'm Ralph, Health and Safety Manager, Risk Assessment Technician and Senior Lifeguard. Yes, yeah, sorry, I haven't introduced you. Rhonda, this is Ralph, the pool boy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Likewise. Well, Rhonda, I'm sure you'll be with us longer than the last girl. She only lasted three months. <laughs> well, anyway, I've got a few bits of administration I need to sort out with you. You'll have to be giving your full induction, of course, including safety briefing and emergency procedures. What to do in the event of a fire, that sort of thing. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I do regular fire alarm tests. How regular? Usually just the two a day, but occasionally I like to throw in a third just to keep everyone on their toes. Oh, and we do a fire drill, third week of every month. You'll never be told in advance which day specifically, though. It could be a Wednesday, it could be a Friday. We just don't know. It's always very exciting. <laughs> so that excitement is about ensuring you don't get complacent. Anyway, aside from that, I've just got a few documents for you to read and sign. Just basic risk assessments, health and safety information, that sort of thing. It's nothing too dull, though. Just a bit of nighttime reading for you. A couple of hundred pages, maybe no more than that. Righto. And then it's just a manual handling training and health and safety in the workplace video and you'll be all set. Okay. Is Geraldine in yet? Can you hear yourself think? Yes. Then no. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows, maybe a week off will calm me down a bit. Morning! <laughs> busy, busy, busy. Sorry, mate. I've had a nightmare getting in. Anyway, no talk to be busy. Staff meeting, two minutes. Or well, maybe not. <laughs> but, yeah, I've almost missed Geraldine flapping about like a demented budgie. Surprised you managed to get in, okay? Yeah. Problems with that new locking system. Bloody swipe card, four digit passcode, thumbprint. Tell me about it. I was baffing around outside for about 20 minutes. I suppose it's no bad thing though with that lunatic on the loose. And I don't mean Geraldine. Lunatic? What lunatic? You know, the serial killer everyone's been talking about? No. That sounds exciting though. Well, that's hardly quite exciting. It's terrifying. Have you watched the news? Not if I can help it. I can never understand what they're going on about. There's always some people shooting each other in some foreign sandy country. And I can never understand why. Or, or who's winning. I think that I'll be better off if they all just calm down and stop shooting each other. Hmm. Yes, good point. I don't know why they haven't thought of that. Well, anyway, it was some maniac who killed a load of people in the country mansion. Not far from here. He locked them in and picked them off one by one. It was like something out of an old 50s horror film. And then he disappeared into night and hasn't been heard of since. I guess he's been hiding out, just waiting to strike again. He is the first serial killer we've ever had in our little town. Like you say, it's quite exciting, really. <coughs> we reckon if he pulls off a couple more killing sprees, he could be up there with the all-time great serial killers. The Boston Strangler, the Manson Family, the Monster of Florence, and now the Bridlington upon Twill Ripper. Finally, <laughs> something to put us on the map. It's not really the sort of thing we want to be known for. Well, what else have we got? Well, there's old Mrs. Winthrop. Her mutton pies have a cult following. And they came third in the National Mutton Pie Championship of 2002. Yeah, I suppose. And there's that bloke that lives at the end of the high street. Bernie something or other. What did he do? He's a TV star. Really? What was he in? He got to the final of Pointless. That doesn't make him a TV star. <laughs> did he win? No, he didn't win, but he did get a coveted Pointless trophy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people. Get around quickly, quickly, quickly. I've got a meeting to attend this afternoon, so I've got to make emails to send. Oh, I scarcely know where to begin. Anyway, first things first, let's welcome our new member of staff, <coughs> Rhonda. When I reviewed all of the applicants, Rhonda here was the outstanding candidate to join our exciting and progressive team. Uh, I thought you said she was the only applicant. Like I said, she was the outstanding candidate. 
Rhonda here has a very, very extensive CV in a whole variety of different sectors, albeit for very short periods of time, but I'm positive her experience will be vital and she'll be with us for a long time to come. Hear, hear. Now, next item on the agenda, as I'm sure you're all aware, this is the first day back after the refurb, and I think we can all agree that the place looks fresh, clean, vibrant, and... <coughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Purple? Mm. Yes, it is quite purple, isn't it? Well, it tested well with folk groups. It's supposed to be relaxing. Did already tell us what wonders on you, Geraldine? Shush. <laughs> now, along with the new paintwork, we have some exciting new equipment, not least of which is the new sunbed. The controls can be operated from here, outside the room, giving the client the maximum privacy and modesty. You program the time here, and there are a variety of different intensity settings. There's even a button that switches between male and female preset modes, giving a more subtle time for men and a more concentrated time for women. Oh, I like the sound of that. Male and female preset modes? Is it easy to use, Miss Geraldine? Because sometimes I have problems with stuff like that. Stuff like what? Well, pretty much anything with buttons, really. <laughs> right. Well, it is fairly straightforward, but it is state-of-the-art, so if you are going to use it, please make sure you take the time to have a little play with it and understand how it works. Oh, if you are going to set the timer, though, please only set it for four minutes. That's the shortest time setting available, and we don't want to be wasting electricity, do we? Now, next item on the agenda, as I'm sure you're all aware, there is a more rigid entry procedure for staff and customers alike. More oh, rigid? I was expecting it to do a retina scan for a like, in. Yes, well, it really is very straightforward once you get used to it. And in light of the current situation, with that lunatic being on the loose, ensuring the safety of our clients is the maximum priority. Now, all customers will now need to press the buzzer. You'll be able to see them on the monitor and press the door release button to allow them in. Should a person or persons be deemed unsuitable by a member of staff, there is a button that plays a polite pre-recorded message that tells them they won't be allowed entry. This all sounds very complicated. More buttons! Oh, don't worry, my dear. They're all clearly marked, so you can't press the wrong thing. OK, that's reassuring, I suppose. You'll be fine, love. Oh, I do hope so. Can't really afford to make any mistakes, really. Mom says if I get fired again, then she'll kick me out. I've got nowhere else to go. Just have to make sure you don't get fired. Don't worry, Denise and I will have your back, won't we? He certainly will. We're all friends here. Oh, that'd be lovely. Don't think I've had friends before. <laughs> yes, the team has a very special bond. It's all part of my unique gift as a manager. I put people before profit. That's my whole motto. Oh, I think I'm really going to like it here. Yes, yes, let's move on, shall we? Time is money and all that. Now, as you all know, we have a particularly special visitor in today. Mrs. Midowich, the local critic, is doing a review article for her website following the relaunch. Now, I want you all to attend to her every need so that her readers know just what sort of special treatment they can expect here at Hummingbird House. She should be here any time now, so <coughs> I want you all on your best behaviour. As you know, she didn't give us a terribly favourable write-up last time, thanks to some people. So I want no repeats of those types of incidents. Why? What happened? Well, she wasn't very nice to us, so Denise and I decided to teach her a bit of a lesson. What did you do? Well, she came in for a massage and was complaining of neck pain, so I performed some chiropractic moves on her. I didn't know you were a trained chiropractor. I'm not. I just grabbed her head and gave it a good yank. <laughs> According to the review, she couldn't move for a week. And after that, she came into the steam room to relax. Seems somehow the door got stuck and she couldn't get out. The poor thing was stuck in there, sweating like a fat man at a buffet. <laughs> That's unlucky. How did the door get stuck? I was holding it shut. <laughs> yes, well, I've made myself perfectly clear. I want everybody on their best behaviour. When people come to Hollingbird House, they should expect to have the most relaxing day of their lives. In fact, you could say it's <coughs> spa for the course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It tested well with focus groups. We're thinking of, of, of making it our slogan. It'll catch on. Um, um, oh, there's our first client. <coughs> Come on, people, busy, 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 everybody on their A game. I've got a management meeting to attend phone calls to make you know how it is. Uh, 
it's hard to be in my office, but as you know, team, my door's always open. <laughs> is she always running around as busy as <coughs> Yep, every single day. Oh, what does she actually do? Well, I have the faintest idea. Come on, let's see who our first customer is. I better get Paul Sarder, see you later. Ah, it's Mr. Buchanan. Brace yourself, he's a bit of a player. <clears throat> Good morning, my lovelies. Good to be back. Oh, hello. You must be the new girl. Oh, hi, I'm Rhonda. Nice to meet you, Mr. Buchanan. I've heard all about you. Don't you believe a word of it. My mind, you are a pretty young thing. Tell me, young Rhonda, do you keep the first aid kit behind the counter there? Um, I'm not sure. I'll have a look. Why? Because I think I've raised my knee calling for you. Okay, well, we've got some <laughs> antiseptic wipes, some bandages, some plasters, and, and some sort of gel stuff, but I don't really know what that's for. Ignoring Rhonda, he's just being silly. Someone's a bit jealous, he thinks. There's no need for that, my Tinsy please. Come and give me some love. Come on. Don't worry, you're still my favourite. Oh, you're still my favourite customer too. And you know it. So what can we do for you today? Sauna, steam room, massage, pool? Well, I definitely have a dip in the pool, I think. Mind you, last time that Ralph chap gave me a stern tone off for diving. Yes, he does that. <laughs> well, maybe this time I'll take a willing bomb and see how he likes that. Oh, don't do that. You'll have nightmares for weeks. So aside from the pool, is there anything else we can do for you today? Oh, maybe a massage if I've got time. I have to stop at my tan, but not left my UV goggles behind. I don't suppose you've got to get them borrowed, do you? I don't think we do, Mr Buchanan. We're still short-stocked on a few things after the refurb. No sunglasses? Nothing at all? Um, only what's in lost property. Let me see. Ah, yes. Nothing really suitable, I'm afraid. They're ladies' <laughs> ones? Not Probably really. not quite your style. Not really, no. Don't really want to look totally stupid, you know. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. I'll have to stop at the tan another time. Right, the pool it is. Now, don't forget, Mr Buchanan, no diving. There is a sign. There's also a sign that says no heavy petting. That's never stopped me before now, has it? <laughs> right, I'm going to get roped up. Now, don't you two be checking out the buns as I walk out now, will you? We won't. I can feel you looking, you know. <laughs> Mind you, you are a human, I suppose. <laughs> wow, he was an interesting character. Like I said, he's totally harmless. He makes me laugh the way he fancies himself. Do you fancy him? Yeah, of course, but there's no point in inflating his ego even more. Oh, here, who's that on the monitor? Ah, uh, yes, the devil incarnate herself. Oh, looks like Mr. Shuttleworth is with her too. That's funny, them arrived at the same time. I'd almost think they knew each other the way they're carrying on. They do look very friendly, don't they? Very friendly indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a scandal right there. I'm not surprised at him, he's always been a perf. But her, she's a dark horse, all right? Sly old minx. <laughs> Anyway, not allowed to say anything. Client confidentiality and all that. Remember, best behaviour. Good morning, dear. It's Mrs. Middlewich. You should be expecting me if you've got your wretched computer system working this time. Good morning, Mrs. Middlewich. Yes, we have you here in the system. Lovely to see you back. How's the neck? Still keeping me awake at night, as it happens. I've already decided to mark you down on that basis alone. Oh, I thought you weren't allowed to do that. According to the rules of your website, every review you do must be objective and not clouded by personal prejudice. Well, you know what I always say, there's no harm in bending the rules from time to time. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do about that. I can't say I was in any rush to come back here, but I have a duty to my readers, so one must tolerate such things. I trust after last time that my visit here will be complimentary. I believe the manageress has made arrangements, yes. Oh, good morning, Mr. Shuttleworth. Nice to see you back again, too. I see you've already met Mrs. Middlewich. Did you arrive together, did you? Uh, no, 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 no. Of course not. I've never heard of such a ridiculous. Thing. Such a suggestion. As gracious me. But I have to get indeed. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, this gentleman and I were just exchanging pleasantries in the car park. Is that what you call it? Excuse me. Nothing. I'm sorry, and you are. I'm, I'm Rhonda, the new girl. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Middlefinger. Middlewitch. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what I said? No, that's not what you said. What did I say then? Something other than Middlewitch, that's all you need to know. Edward, I mean, Mr. Shuttleworth, you'll just be moaning your new security system. 
seemed a bit of a palaver to get in, and I have to agree. Mr Shuttleworth wasn't being terribly complimentary about it. No, he's got quite the tongue on him, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get you sorted out, shall we? Mrs Middlewitch, if you'd like to wait here, but even the manager, I should like to come out and welcome you personally. Mr Shuttleworth, if you'd like to follow me, please, and we'll get you all roped up. And what were you thinking today, Mr Shuttleworth? Pool, sauna, tan bed? Well, I've been feeling rather tense recently, and I thought maybe a nice massage to help me relax. <laughs> Where are we feeling tense today, Mr Shuttleworth? Oh, the lower back area. Yes, I thought it might be. Sort of really low, down here on me. have been through this before, Mr Shuttleworth. I'm not massaging your bum. <laughs> Well, I'll see you've redecorated. Oh, apparently so, yes. I'm, I'm new, you see, so I never saw it before. Well, it's an absolutely hideous lime green colour. And it seems to be equally hideous lilac. Is lilac on special offer at B&Q or something? Couldn't really say, Mrs Puddleditch. I'm more of a homemade girl myself. <laughs> Middlewitch, they do get it right. Middlewitch? Yeah. Sorry. Well... I see the service is as slow as ever. At least things seem a little calmer than last time. Emergency! Emergency! Oh no, what's the matter? Do I need to sound the fire alarm? No, it's nothing like that. Mr Buchanan has stuffed his little toe and suffered very slight bruising. I applied an ice pack and despite his protest put him in the recovery position. I need to fill out an accident report, quick family accident book. I don't know where it is. It's in one of the drawers, can I quickly go up? Oh, never mind. No, wait, that's my phone script. Can't wait till we quite back. Oh, my God. Oh, OK. Just, just stay <laughs> calm, Rundle. Just, just stay calm. Are you all right, dear? You look a little pale. Yes, yes. Everything's fine. Just, just first aid now. Just, everything's going to be just fine. Oh, God. Are you going to answer it, dear? Yes, yes. Good morning, this is Hummingbird House, the finest beauty and wellness bar in Bridlington upon Twill, your first stop for relaxation, therapy and a sort of treatments from the, from the, from the Cosmopolitan Care Clinic Colour Collection. <coughs> we have a comprehensive selection of state-of-the-art equipment, including tanning beds, sauna, jacuzzi, birthing pool and vibrators. <laughs> and if you're still feeling intense, we have a trained masseuse who is here to touch you inappropriately. <laughs> My name is Rhonda. How may I be of assistance today? Hello? <laughs> Hello? No? I've got a second one today. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> um, I think I maybe see where Geraldine is up to. One minute. Hello? Hello, it's Rhonda here on the front desk. Is that Geraldine? Do oh, yes, I got it right. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, I don't know whether you've been made aware that there is a Mrs. Fiddlesticks here to see you. <laughs> Middlewitch. Uh, I'm Mrs. Middlewitch here to see you. I'm sorry? No, no, she can't hear you. I'll just turn down the volume just to be on the safe side. Just on a call. Yes, I've got the tail end of it. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, never mind. I really <laughs> haven't got the energy. Let's just get this over with, shall we? Yes, very good. Well, I just wanted to wish you a very pleasant day here at Hummingbird House, and of course assure you that your visit today is completely free of charge. Ch cheap at twice the price. <laughs> oh, yes, very good, Mrs. Minowich, very good indeed. Well, if you'll allow me to show you through personally, I can show you our, our new facilities. Uh, do you follow me? <laughs> Crisis averted. I've managed to curtail the swelling and apply a small bandage to his little toe. He insisted he was okay without oxygen, so I'll monitor his status for the next hour or so. We found that accident book for me. I need to get that probed <coughs> in under the end of risk assessment. I think I've stubbed his toe on his death trap. I think I've got the accident book here. Don't know where the risk assessments are, though. Oh, uh, they're in Geraldine's office. Uh, third filing cabinet along. Third along. Got it. Okay, heard a commotion. Oh, it's a minor catastrophe, but fortunately I was on scene. How did you get on with Mr. Shuttleworth? Did he accidentally graze your boob whilst turning around again? Yes, three times. Good old Mr. Shuttleworth. Well, it seems I have some competition these days. Him and the lovely Mrs. Middlewich were getting on very friendly terms out in the car park. No, but she's married. Oh, scandal. They were necking and everything. Ew. <laughs> what was it like? Revolting, like two sea urchins having a fight. <laughs> what time do you make it? Uh, about ten. You reckon is it time for the morning fire alarm test? Will it annoy Mrs. Middlewich? Probably. I say go for it. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Steam, then. <laughs> Nobody? We, we just need to take a moment here and uh, try and stay calm. If we think this too rationally, we can come up with a plan. Stay calm! Stay calm! How can you stay calm in a time like this? We're trapped! Locked in! Anything can happen! We're never gonna get out of it! I think I'm gonna faint! <laughs> We can work this out, no problem. All we need is a carefully considered plan. Perfect. Exactly. Agreed. Good. So does anyone have one? <laughs> what? Does anyone have a plan? Shouldn't you be the one coming up with a plan? Honestly, I have to think of everything in this place. I pretty much run it single-handedly. You've no idea the stress I'm under. It's all too much. What if you do all have to think of something? God. <laughs> Nobody is going to die. Probably. <laughs> We're just locked in. A minor bug with a new locking system, no doubt. I think the 
priority, first and foremost, is to ensure the clients are both safe and content, at least so far as they can be. Ralph and I can see to that. Rhonda, why don't you catch your breath and then try phoning the security people. See if they can send someone out to have a look at the door. Okay. Okay, I think I can manage that. Right. Yes. Good. Ralph, Denise, you see to the clients and make sure that everybody's okay. And Rhonda, you phone the security people. Sounds like I've got a plan. You've got a plan? Yes. Honestly, I don't know how this place would function without me. <coughs> Sure she's got phone calls to make, emails to send, online shopping to do. Oh, useless woman. Right, what's Mr Shuttleworth doing? Waiting for his massage. I'm not sure if I can be doing with him today. <laughs> well, I'm not doing it. It always moans when I do it. It always moans when I do it, just in a creepy way. <laughs> well, whatever, he always prefers you. It is your turn. I don't care. I'm not doing it. There's absolutely nothing you can say or do that's going to change my mind. Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> okay. Chance, buddy boy. Oh, come on, best of three. No way. Get in there and work your magic. Um, guys, I hate to interrupt, but I think we may have a problem. Nothing new there. Story of the day so far. What's the matter, Rhonda? It's the phone. It's dead. I can't get anything. Seriously? He's right, there's nothing. How what? Phone lines must have been cut. Why would somebody do that? Why? Oh my god. This is a nightmare. What are we going to do? Let's get in the bag again. No, let's put that with all this in peace. I'm the first aid expert here, I'm just doing a few basic checks. She'll have passed out by the time you finish faffing around. No, she won't. You're all right, aren't you, Rhonda Love? Yes, I just need to take a minute. See, she's fine. I'll probably need to keep an eye on her for a while, though. Check she's okay, fill out the relevant paperwork, it's probably going to take a while. Nice try, Sonny. Mr Shuttleworth, massage, occupy. Fine. But if he moans in a creepy way while I'm massaging him, I'm never talking to you again. <laughs> As long as I've known him. Do you know, he once called me down to change rooms for an emergency because one of the clients had tied a knot on their robe too tight and it got stuck. Afterwards, he said that while he was impressed with my response time, he would have to report me for running with scissors. It gets tight nice sometimes, but at least our safety record is excellent. Well, I don't feel terribly safe just now, I have to be honest. Why would someone lock us in and cut the phone lines? Well, we don't know for sure they've been caught, do we? Just could be a problem with the phone lines in the area. I don't know. Well, the chances that all the phone lines in the area would just go down like that. Well, they are maintained by BT, so it's not that unlikely when you think about it. <laughs> so, I still don't like it, though. Something very strange is going on here. What do you mean? Well, have you ever had one of those feelings? One of what feelings? You know, when you just feel uncomfortable. Yes. Any time I'm left alone with Mr Shuttleworth. <laughs> no. You just have this feeling in, in the bottom of your stomach. Like... Trapped wind? <laughs> no, no, I can't explain it. Just this, just this weird feeling. It, it, it's all right, I think I understand. You mean like a presentiment, don't you? Yes, yes, exactly. Do you actually know what the word presentiment means? No. It means like a premonition. A what? You know, a, a sense of foreboding. A what? An admonition. Right. It means you think something bad is going to happen. Yes, that is it. The minute I found out that the, the door was locked, I've been having an <coughs> admonition. Admonition. Yes, one of them. I'm having an, an admonition. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation for all this. Well, I told you, Mr Shuttleworth here is not happy with my massage technique. What seems to be amiss, Mr Shuttleworth? What seems to be amiss? Well, firstly, you managed to contrive to lock us in and keep us here against our will. Then you managed to keep me waiting a full you know, 20 minutes for a massage. When you finally get round to it, you send this ham-fisted gorilla in to <coughs> assault my delicate ailing body. We're all locked in here against our will, Mr Shuttleworth, and Ralph here is a trained masseuse. Yeah, what's all the ham-fisted talk? 
You went at me as if you were kneading a loaf of bread. It, it's important to apply firm pressure, Mr Shuttleworth. It encourages knotted muscles to release their tension. Firm pressure. I felt as if I was being trampled upon by a herd of wild wildebeest. No, what I feel is the feminine touch is what's needed. Well, unfortunately, I'm not available to do a massage today. I've got to assist Rhonda here, the new girl on the front desk. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm going to be able to relax with Gorilla Boy here, man, <laughs> me. Now I feel the massage would be much better coming from someone with, um... Boobs? <laughs> soft hands. Hmm. Well, like I said, unfortunately, I'm tied up with staff training today, as well as the problem of trying to get us out of the building. I tell you what, Mr Shuttleworth, how about you go and unwind in the sauna for a short time? I believe Mrs. Middlewitch is in there. I can take you through personally if you'd like. How about that? Well, I suppose that's better than nothing. I wonder, can you tell me what Mrs. Middlewitch is wearing? Just a swimming costume, I should imagine. Oh, really? Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> well, I mean, Mr. Shuttleworth, she's yeah. this way. I, I wonder if you could perhaps bring with you one of your little combs and a little bottle of lotion. We've been this before, Mr. Shuttleworth. I'm not grooming your chest hair. <laughs> what? He called you Gorilla Boy. It's marginally better than Pool Boy, I suppose. Pompous, miserable old fart. Him and that middle which woman deserve each other. Look here. Busy, Barney. Busy, busy, busy. Just thought I'd poke my head out to check that everything's okay. Yes, thank you, Geraldine. All under control. I mean, obviously, we're trapped in a building with no hope of escape. All outside communications have been cut and customers are complaining left, right and centre. So, in that regard's not quite what I expected on my first day. But other than that, we're all hunky-dory. What do you mean all outside communication has been cut? Oh, the phone lines are down, apparently. It's a good job you implemented that strict no mobile phones in the workplace policy, isn't it, Geraldine? Well, God send right now that one. Uh, never mind that now. What's all this customer complaining thing about? Please don't tell me it's Mrs. Middlewich. The business can't stand to have another review like the last one. It'll be the end of us, the very least the end of me. The board of directors won't stand for it! No, Mrs. Middlewich is in the sauna, I believe. It was Mr. Shuttleworth who was complaining. <coughs> I see. And, um, what about Mr. Buchanan? Yeah, I forgot about him. I'm not sure where he is, actually. I need to check up on his toe. Not seen him for a while, come to think of it. How odd. Ralph, perhaps you'd have to go and look for him. Make sure everything's okay. <laughs> Attend to his every need. Maybe you'd better go down the back way in case he's gotten lost. Come on, off you go. I'll be in my office if you need me. <coughs> You're right on your own on the front desk for a minute. Well, I can't let anybody in or out, and we're not getting any phone calls, so... I think even I can manage this. Be back in a minute. <coughs> well, that's a bit odd. What is? Mrs. Millowitch wasn't in the sauna. I went to look for her and it turned out she just slipped back to the changing room for something. So I went back to the, shore, the sauna, but Mr. Shuttleworth was gone. Just completely disappeared. He didn't come back through here, did he? No, that is odd. Oh, maybe he went to go find Mrs. Millowitch and then they decided to sneak off somewhere private, so, you know, I could have a bit of a romp. <laughs> Rhonda, if you're going to continue working here, I must ask that you please don't ever put an image like that in my head again. In fact, now I've come to think of it, I must ask that you never use the word romp again either. It makes me most uncomfortable. Understood. So, you know how I was saying before? When? About me having an amputation. An admonition to <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, I then. Just have, you know, a bit of a funny feeling. Funny feeling like you're going to vomit at the thought of them romping? <gasps> now you've got me using the word romp now. No, about the situation. Something bad's about to happen. And I've had feelings like this before. You know what that means. That you're about to set the fire alarm off? No, it means something bad's about to happen. <laughs> something bad? What? Worse than being stuck in your place of work with a boss who couldn't direct traffic <coughs> and a pervy old man and a contorted little shrew as customers. Well, yes, actually. Don't know what exactly, but I have an idea. What? Well, I could be wrong, but... Oh, what? Adamis, I thought I heard you. How are we getting on with the customers? Is everyone satisfied? <coughs> well, I'm not terribly sure, really. He seems to have a bit of a problem. One of them has gone missing. Yes, I know. I've already sent Ralph out to look for him. Oh, that was quick. How did you know about it? We were just OK, I've looked everywhere. He's nowhere to be seen. Oh, it's official, then. The old man's disappeared. 
And he was here only a short time ago. Now what? He's not that old. Well, he's not exactly a spring chicken, is he? Well, none of us are, but you make it out like he's some sort of clapped out pervy old man like Mr. Shuttleworth or something. He is Mr. Shuttleworth? Who is? Mr. Shuttleworth. <laughs> what? Mr. Shuttleworth is a clapped out pervy old man like Mr. Shuttleworth because well, he is Mr. Shuttleworth. You're saying that Mr. Shuttleworth is Mr. Shuttleworth? Yes. Well, what do you want for that? It's a Blue Peter badge. No, I just want you to acknowledge that Mr. Shuttleworth is old. I never said he wasn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. What I think we can all agree on is that Mr. Buchanan, whilst not necessarily in the prime of life, is still in, shall we say, moderately good shape, and certainly not old. I absolutely agree. Mr. Buchanan isn't old. Well, then. But he's not Mr. Shuttleworth, is he? Who is he? Mr. Buchanan. So you're saying that Mr. Buchanan's not Mr. Shuttleworth, but rather Mr. Shuttleworth himself is Mr. Shuttleworth? Yes. It's a good job you're here, Denise. Indeed, we're in agreement. The person you're looking for is old. No, we've just agreed he's not old. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. We've agreed that Mr. Shuttleworth is Mr. Shuttleworth, and Mr. Buchanan is not Mr. Shuttleworth. Exactly. He's Mr. Buchanan. He's not Mr. Shuttleworth. Who is? Mr. Buchanan. What? Mr. Buchanan is. Mr. Buchanan is Mr. Buchanan? Yes. Well, that's not Mr. Shuttleworth. I know. So you're saying that Mr. Shuttleworth is Mr. Shuttleworth and Mr. Buchanan is Mr. Buchanan. Mr. Shuttleworth is not Mr. Buchanan and Mr. Buchanan is not Mr. Shuttleworth. Mr. Shuttleworth, whilst not being Mr. Buchanan, is old and Mr. Buchanan himself, not being Mr. Shuttleworth, is not old. Correct. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> Can I just interject here for just one second because I, I think there's been some confusion. You don't say. Well, who exactly are you looking for? Mr. Buchanan. Mr. Wait. What? I never said I was looking for Mr. Shuttleworth. I was looking for Mr. Buchanan. And he's disappeared. I can't find him anywhere. So that makes two, then. What does? Two people. Hang on. Why did you think I was looking for Mr. Shuttleworth? Because he's disappeared, too. Oh. How what? This is it. This is exactly what I feared. You know what this means, don't you? Yes. I have a mouth of paperwork to do. <laughs> no. It means it's him. Him who? Mr. Buchanan or Mr. Shuttleworth? Because I've got the faintest idea who's who anymore. No, neither of them. Well, it could be one of them, I suppose. Who could? The Bridlington of Antwil Ripper. What's going on here? Oh, this is Middlewich. What are you doing here? And why shouldn't I be here? We thought you'd gone off romping, Mrs. Jiggledy. <laughs> <laughs> I shan't dignify that with a response. I to say, I'm sure you're getting my name wrong on purpose. Not that I've come to expect any better. Uh, no, what I, I mean to say is you shouldn't be out here in the main reception in just your robe, Mrs. Middlewich. Well, you know what I always say, there's no harm in bending the rules from time to time. Now, am I expected to stand in my robe all day? I asked a perfectly simple question and I should like a perfectly simple answer. At once. No. What is going on? No. No? No, you're not just expected to stand there all day? You'll be perfectly welcome to take a seat. Not that question, you stupid girl. The question I asked is what is going on? What is going on where? Here. Right here? Yes, right here. What about it? What is going on? When? Now, you imbecile. Nothing's going on, Mrs. Midwich. We're just having a brief staff meeting, that's all. Oh, so you often have staff meetings about the bridling to the Pontville Ripper, do you? I'm sorry. You heard me. Just as I heard this young girl, you were talking about the Bridlington upon Twill Ripper, and I demand to know why. But we were just talking, Mrs. Middlewich, just chatting away, you know, how you do. No, I don't, because I try to avoid conversing with your kind, if at all possible. <laughs> you mean our kind? Well, I should like to. You should like to what, dear? Hmm? Have you got something to say? No, I thought not. Because you know, after your behaviour last time, all I've got to do is mention your name in a negative light and you'll be kicked out of here faster than it takes you to strain someone's neck. So bite that poisonous tongue of yours. Now, I demand to know what is going on at once. Well... By somebody other than this blithering idiot. <laughs> now, now, Mrs. Middlewitch. What she said? When I said by somebody other than this blithering idiot... I was rather hoping for somebody further up the food chain than the pool boy. <laughs> really, Mrs. Middlewich, there's nothing to be concerned about. Really? Then perhaps you'll explain to me where Mr. Shuttleworth is. He's, um... Well, you don't know, do you? So am I to understand that not only are we locked in this godforsaken place, but now somebody has gone missing? Oh, well, two people, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Honda. What do you mean, two people? Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Middlewich. 
I shall be the judge of that. Now exactly who has gone missing? Well, it appears another of our clients, Mr Buchanan, is also missing, but I I'm sure they'll turn up. Turn up? <laughs> turn up? I demand you find them at once instead of standing around here gossiping about the Bridlington upon Twill Ripper. Yes, yes, of course. Wait, wait a second. Why were you standing around talking about that? Oh, it's nothing. It's just young Rhonda here getting a little carried away with herself, that's all. Really, Rhonda? And what are you suggesting? Well, I was just saying to Denise before I've got this bit of a funny feeling. What funny feeling? I'm having an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> Very personal information. <laughs> I didn't realise you were pregnant, but regardless, it's hardly relevant, dear. She means an admonition. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just saying something strange is going on here. Just take a look at the evidence. We're trapped in a remote location that the phone lines have been caught. The phone lines have been cut? Yes, no people are disappearing. Oh, don't talk <laughs> such nonsense, Rhonda. Really, Mrs Minowich, it's nothing but silly speculation. Well, she has a point, you know. We've already established that we're locked in. If just one person had gone missing, then I wouldn't think anything of it. But two people, it is a little fishy. <sighs> exactly. You see, this is how you said you did it. But those people in that mansion not far from here. Pick them off one by one. So, at this very moment, our, our lives could be in danger? Nonsense, it's just a coincidence. Everything is fine. No, everything's not fine. This is the only thing that makes sense. The only explanation. The Bridlington upon Twill Ripper is here. He's here, I tell you. He walks amongst us. We're all going to die. <laughs> Oh, yes, as practical weapons go, it's right up there with the pole punch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, guys, I need your help urgently. Oh no. You found a body. You have, haven't you? Found a body? What are you on about? I'm just trying to get these risk assessments amended. I thought you said it was urgent. It is. Being slayed by the Bridlington upon toil rep is bad enough, but leaving behind incomplete paperwork in the process <laughs> can you imagine? No, that sounds like a nightmare. Right, so how me get this filled in. Which bit are you struggling with? Right, well, risk. Being locked in a building with no means of escape. Probability of risk occurring? High. Persons affected, staff and customers. Corrective action. This is where I'm struggling. Corrective action. Well, surely corrective action is just fixing the lock so we can get out. Corrective action. Fix lock. <laughs> then open door. <laughs> Ongoing actions if applicable. I was thinking here, you should have some sort of door checking rotor. Which one of you wants to be the door monitor? <gasps> oh! Yes, yes! I always wanted to be a monitor at school, but they wouldn't let me. Right. <coughs> what? what do I have to do? Periodically, throughout the day, you need to test that the door is working. Okay. How do I do that? <laughs> you open it. Okay. And if it opens? Then it's working. What if it doesn't open? Then it's not working. <laughs> okay. How many times do I have to check it? I'm not sure. What do you think, Denise? Is hourly too excessive? Yes. Yes, it is. And given that it will be used throughout the day anyway, I'm, I'm sure just a couple of times a day will be plenty. Schedule twice daily. Persons responsible, door monitor. Rhonda. <laughs> yeah, what times in the day should we do it? Personally, I'd suggest first thing in the morning and last thing in the afternoon, like maybe 9am and 5pm. Twice daily at 9am and 5pm. Okay, so in the morning, when I get to work and I come into the building, first thing I do is check that the door is working. Then, when I've finished my shift and I'm leaving the building at the end of the day, before I go to my car, the last thing I do is check that the door is working. Yep, that about comes it. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, next one, risk. Being attacked by multiple count serial killer. Probability of risk occurring. I'm not really sure what to put here because I could say it's high because it's happened, but objectively speaking, it's low because it's probably just a statistical anomaly. Maybe just go with medium then. Medium. Persons affected. Anyone who lives to tell the tale, I suppose. <laughs> corrective action. Any thoughts on corrective action? It just so happens we do. While you've been filling in your forms, Rhonda and I have been a bit more constructive. We've been assessing various strategies and discussing what weapons we can use to defend ourselves. Really? What have you come up with? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Bath stops and stationary supplies? Done! And a slipper. How are you going to use a slipper as a weapon? No way, not on my watch. But this is a life or death situation. I don't care. I'm not getting out the staple gun. Absolutely nothing whatsoever you can say or do is going to change my mind. Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> what do I get out of it? If I win, we get out the staple gun. If you win, I'll massage Shuttleworth the next three times he comes in. Assuming he's not dead already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least some time. Yes! <laughs> Ridiculous. Come on, where'd you keep it? In here, actually. In a locked compartment under your desk. You'll need to help me though. Why? It's a double lock. Both keys need to be turned simultaneously. <laughs> there you go, this one's yours. Locks there at the end of the desk. Remember, they need to be turned simultaneously. On the count of three, yes? Yep. One. Two, three. three. I think it worked. I heard something. Nobody. <laughs> wow, there it is. Haven't seen that since the great 20% off poster fiasco last year. <laughs> 
Yes, we all know how that turned out. These sorts of things can happen when an individual uses a piece of equipment without the proper training. It was hardly serious. It drew blood. She was dying <coughs> not to need stitches. Hmm. Can I have a guide? Certainly not. Requires the proper training. Is there training me now? Do you go? Do you have any idea how long it takes to be trained in the proper use of the staple? Only a minute or two, I should think. Well, yes, that is all it takes, but that's not the point. Oh, come on! Surely these are exceptional circumstances? Yes, they are. Exceptional circumstances? Fine. But only for the duration of this troubling episode. As soon as this day is over, your staple gun licence is revoked. Right, this is the safety catch. Never take it off until the last moment, and only when absolutely necessary. Understand? Yes. Right. Hold this and don't take off the safety catch. Be back in a moment. Where are you going? To get some staples. There's none in it. I don't keep it loaded. <laughs> you okay, Rhonda? Yes, I just really want to take off the safety catch. I wouldn't. It's more than your life's worth. It doesn't look that dangerous. Never point the staple gun towards yourself or others. Come over here. Come on. We're not in use. We keep it pointed down towards the desk here, like this. Okay, sorry. If I take off this safety catch and load it up with staples, can I trust you to keep it pointed down towards the desk? Yes, absolutely, definitely. Right. Let's go in here. There. It's ready to fire. Can I trust you to hold it? Yes. And which way do we keep it pointed? Downwards towards the desk. Good. Oh my god, what was yeah, that? Staple gun down towards the desk, please. <laughs> I'm sure it was nothing. Denise, why don't you go check it out? Why me? Because I need to supervise Rhonda and a cheat trigger finger. <laughs> no way, if I'm going, you're going with me. Come on, we need to investigate. <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on a second there, Hetty Waitrop. Why do we need to investigate? <laughs> because there's a serial killer on loose and there's people in there. Like who? Geraldine and Mrs. Millwit. Yeah? We can't just leave them. We could. Come on, even I'm not that cold. We need to save Geraldine. What about Mrs. Millwit? Collateral damage? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> come on, let's go off to our impending deaths. What weapon do you want? Uh, I'll take the bath one. Alright, I've got the scissors. Rhonda, stay here. Okay, Rhonda, just stay calm. Keep this staple gun facing, facing downwards towards the desk. Oh. <laughs> what happened? Walk with scissors, please. <laughs> Sorry. You see, this is when accidents happen, and you should have kept that locked up. It's okay, I kept it facing downwards towards the desk, as you said. It's night. Panic over. Did you see anything? No, we didn't get very far. Come on, let's go back in there. Rhonda, maybe you should come with us. <coughs> um, I, I don't think I can. It's all right, love. I know you're scared. I am too. <laughs> we can do this. No, wait, it's not that. Then what? I think I'll staple myself to the desk. <laughs> It's all right, I've got scissors, we'll soon get that out. Um, Ralph? What? Do you want the good news or the bad news? The good news. I've got the staple out. What's the bad news? I've broken the scissors. Um, <laughs> uh, probably not the best time to say, but I think the staple gun's broken too. It looks like it's jammed. I see. I've done this before, a staple gets jammed in the mechanism. Can you fix it? Yeah, but it takes ages, you have to dismantle it. Where's your bath bomb? I dropped it in a panic when I heard the noise. Oh, great, so now we don't even have any weapons. Well, that's not entirely true. We have this. <laughs> you see? You both thought this was a joke, but I knew it would come in handy. This is it. Our salvation. <laughs> Our last line of defence. The only thing between us and the Bridlington upon Twelve Ripper. Oh my God! Sorry, you double! <laughs> Skiffy, I'm sorry. I just panicked. I thought there was someone out there. What did they look like? Hideous and contorted with, with eyes of the devil. Mrs. Middlewich is still alive. <laughs> so now what? What do you mean? Well, we're still stuck in here. I don't even have any weapons. I don't know. I think the whole bunch is still lying around somewhere. One whole punch between three of us. I think we're going to need a bit more than that. I agree. I think. I think we could. We should set some booby traps. 
Whoa, 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 hold on a second there, MacGyver. What do you mean, set some booby traps? Well, we can improvise with whatever we have. You know, maybe we could <laughs> slow him down a bit. Okay, that's not such a bad idea, I suppose. You can't just stand around here all day coming up with ideas for booby traps. No, you're right. Someone needs to go and find Geraldine and Mrs. Middlewitch. What do you mean, someone? Well, we can't go. We're girls. We're scared and weak and vulnerable and you're a big, strong man. Yeah, like there's any way I'm going to fall for that. Well, try and pop into this. Okay. <clears throat> Good feeling about this one. Yes! Oh, statistically, that shouldn't be possible. Here, be safe. Okay. <coughs> wow, thanks. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, well, if you happen um, upon a ripper and is attacking you, you can take the base off the whole bunch and get, get all those little paper circles and then you can throw them in the air. Why? <laughs> because it'll cause a distraction and you can make your escape. I don't know who's in more danger, me or my own through there, or you in here with Mondo. <laughs> right, stay here. I'll be back in a minute. What if you not? Then I guess the police will find my body lying on a bed of whole punch confetti. <laughs> Somehow I feel this is all my fault. Well, you mustn't say that. Some of it definitely isn't your fault. Oh, it just seems that wherever I go, I always cause trouble. I always make a mistake and end up getting myself fired. Why shouldn't this be any different? Well, that attitude isn't going to do you much good, is it? Let's try and stay a bit positive. <sighs> What's the point? I'm so convinced, you know. So convinced that... This time I'd make a go of it. I wouldn't make a mistake. I wouldn't get fired. Make my mum proud. Well, keep your head and maybe you still can. I guess. No, I guess about it. For your first day, you're doing really well. What do you mean that? Of course, who doesn't make a couple of silly mistakes on their first day? God knows I did. Oh, thanks, Denise. Don't know how I would have gotten through today without you. Come on, let's focus on the job at hand. We need to think of some booby traps and see if we can find any other weapons too. Well, there's nothing left in the stationery front. Any more bath bombs in there? No, there was just that one for the display. We keep them all in the storeroom out back, but I'm not going through there on my own. So, I guess the only thing we can do is just sit tight then? I guess so. Just sit tight and stay calm. <laughs> stay calm. Oh my god! This is it! We're all gonna die! Goodbye, cruel oh, world! Get, get, quick, grab something! Grab what? Anything, look under the desk, grab anything. Oh god. Oh, I've got this. Why do you keep finding those? I thought it was an odd one, but it must have been a pair. It'll have to do. <laughs> what are we going to do? Do you know what? To hell with this. If I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. Come on, let's investigate. Okay, but I'm taking the slipper with me. Fine, you were very effective with the last one. Oh, come on, get behind me. Whoever you are, we're on! Shh! Don't give away our position. Now get ready. This is it. What are you doing? <laughs> Please stop doing that. It really hurts. We heard a noise. We were investigating. Who are you? The Scooby Gang? There's no one out there. How did you get on? Well, the same, really. Geraldine and Middle Witch. No sign of them. I was going to look down the back way. You've already done that. I've only got one place left to check. Stay here. Well? And then there were three. I've looked everywhere. The changing rooms, the pool area, the steam room, the store cupboards everywhere. What does this mean? Has the Ripper gone? No. It means only one thing as far as I can tell. The Ripper is still here. In fact, they're in this very room. One of us. Well, this is just silly. We can't just sit here like this all day. Have you got any better ideas? Because if it involves rock, paper, scissors, you can count me out. <laughs> Do you know what? If it's one of you two, then just get it over with. Kill me now. I won't put up a fight. All I ask is, 
I wish to be cremated. Not buried. <laughs> cremated. Why are you so adamant about that? I don't know. Just like the sound of it. You know, like, you know, it's in bed. <laughs> well, that'll make for an interesting conversation at the funeral directors. When they ask what attire you should be in for the coffin, we could say a bikini and some goggles. <laughs> sort of open casket as well, that might raise a few eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, that might be nice. Get some air to my skin before being cremated. <laughs> I suppose that depends on how you kill me, though. If you're going to leave a big scar, then best have a closed casket. It won't leave a big scar, Rhonda, don't worry. I was going to do it with a bath bomb. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But if you put up too much of a struggle, one might need to staple you to the desk and finish off the bomb. <laughs> don't do that. Why don't you do it with one of the lotions or something? What do you want me to do? Moisturise it again? <laughs> well, there are worse ways to go. But I was thinking maybe one of them might be toxic. You could poison me with it. It wouldn't hurt. And, you know, it would be less painful and it wouldn't leave a big scar. Rhonda, he's teasing. I'm not going to kill you. Right, we're in exactly the same position. But for all we know, it could be you. This whole acting simple thing could just be an elaborate double bluff. <laughs> Even as we sit here, you could be conniving away to off us both. I don't think so, somehow. Why not? <laughs> because whoever the Bridlington upon Twill Ripper is, they have a devious criminal mind. I don't know, I, I look at Wanda and she just doesn't strike me <coughs> as a devious criminal mind type. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Imagine her committing a robbery. She'd probably set the fire off. Probably. <laughs> I can hear you, you know. Sorry, Rhonda. That does leave a problem, though. What does? Well, if you both agree it isn't Rhonda, and I know it isn't me, then that only leaves one person left in the room. Are you insinuating I'm the Ripper? Not insinuating anything, Denise. Just stating a fact, that's all. I know it isn't me. We both know it isn't Rhonda. So all fingers are pointing at you. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to tell us, Denise? Yes. I've been here in this room when everyone's gone missing. Yeah, that does start smiling in the words. You didn't really think it was me, did you? No. I don't really know what to think, but you seem to be the only ones left. Oh, I wonder what happened to Geraldine. I wonder if she's, you know, still with us. Well, the place is a disorganised mess, so she's definitely still with us in spirit. <laughs> yeah, let's face it. She couldn't organise a tea party in a doll's house. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> I've had a speaking spell toy with more interpersonal <laughs> skills. She is pretty much the most useless individual I've ever had the misfortune to work with. Oh, on. yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, uh. But she's probably dead now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you think this is it? I think it might be. Well, it's been nice knowing you both. Oh, what a lovely thing to say. It's been nice knowing you two, then. <laughs> and you, Random. Right. Might as well bow out with some dignity, eh? Yeah. Courage in the face of adversity. Whoever the Ripper is, I wish I'd hurry up. It's the waiting part that's the worst. <coughs> I've been resigned to my fate for ages. What do you mean? Because I was the one who realised. I knew, you know. Saying to Denise before I've got this kind of sick sense about these things. From the minute I tried that jaw, I knew I was never going to get out of here. Pushed and pushed with all I had, but it just <laughs> From that moment, I realised I was going to spend the final few hours of my life trapped with no options, no way, no hope. Feel the world closing in around me. And then it was also clear I was doomed. Doomed, I tell you. Doomed. <laughs> Did she just say what I think she said? Yeah. <laughs> that she pushed and pushed on the door and it wouldn't budge. Yeah. Doesn't that door open inwards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's about time! <laughs> Such as this. Is this some kind of joke? What on earth are you not playing at? Where have you come from? Outside? Where the hell do you think you've come from? You mean to say you've been outside this entire time? Yes. I thought I'd wander out the back way and have a look at the lock for myself. When the door opened, I stepped outside and the damn thing slammed shut behind me. 
And I thought I'd see if I could track down Mr. Shuttleworth, so I went to the changing room area, but I thought I was being attacked. Why? What happened? I don't know. I heard someone shouting, and then something flew past my head. It looked like an old slipper. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't going to hang around to find out, so I went down the back way and tried the door out of desperation. Of course, didn't expect it to open, so I just poked my head outside and... And I was sat on the step, and by the time I realised she was there, well... Damn thing, it's I'm shut again, we're both locked down. So what I would like to know first and foremost is why you told us the door was locked when it clearly wasn't. Well, it's all a bit of a misunderstanding, Mrs. Higgledy Pig. <laughs> <laughs> See, being new here, I was unaccustomed to the particular direction in which the door happened to swing in. Firstly, Higgledy Pig sounds nothing like Middlewich. It's not even a close run. <coughs> Secondly, now let me just get this straight. Are you seriously going to stand there and tell me that the reason this whole chain of events started was because you didn't know which way the door opens? Is that what I'm hearing? It's been a confusing day. There's a lot to take in. The door has a big sign saying, pull on it! <laughs> yeah, it makes sense now that I think about it. <laughs> the most breathtakingly ludicrous individual I've ever had the misfortune to encounter. Now, now, Mrs. Middlewich, I admit I'm a little aggrieved myself, but let's everyone just take a second here. Take a second? Young man, I've been standing out there in the cold for several hours. I've got nipples you could hang these drones on. <laughs> I'm in no mood to be patient, and I doubt this good woman is either. Well, why don't you go and get help? Dress like this? Would it have been looking? I was going to go wandering around the countryside in nothing but a cheap robe and my birthday suit. What I'd like to know is why you didn't uh, let us in. Well, you should have pressed the buzzer. We should have pressed the buzzer. <laughs> you that, Edward? We should have pressed the buzzer. Well, it's a good job you're here, because we would never have thought of that on our own. <laughs> what do you think we've been doing all this time? We've done nothing but press the buzzer for hours on end. Why the hell didn't you answer it? Well, it's not sounded in here. It must be broken. That's the only thing I can think. Unless someone's pressed a button they shouldn't have done, of course. I, I've not pressed any buttons. I know I've not pressed any. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't look at me. The only time I pressed the buzzer button was when there was a man outside that I didn't like the look of. So I press the button that tells him he won't be allowed entry. I almost hesitate to ask this, Rhonda, but which button did you press exactly? The one that says buzz off. I think you'll find that's the button that turns the buzzer off, sweetie. <laughs> in your stationary cupboard? Yes, but not this one. I like this one. What were you really doing there? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. You were hiding, weren't you? Hiding? Yes, you thought the Bridlington upon 12 record was here, so you were hiding down the desk and leaving us to face them alone. I bet when I went in there to get staples, you were 
hiding behind your desk. And then the, the first chance you got, you crawled out here on your hands and knees and took refuge behind this here desk. Oh, good grief, Ralph. Really? Crawl out on my hands and knees? You do come up with some silly ideas. You've gone too far this time, Geraldine. I'm, uh, I'm going to the board of directors with this. Uh, Ralph? Don't try and talk me, Captain. This is, this is scandalous. Yes, I know, but I just need to check something. Mm. Um, how long have you been behind there, Geraldine? Well, long enough to hear you say that I couldn't organise a tea party in a dollhouse amongst other things, which technically speaking is insubordination and thus a dismissible offence. Yes. Well, I'm prepared to let it go this time. <laughs> but I want to notice that I am somewhat disgruntled. <laughs> Julie noted, if it makes you feel any better, I was thinking of ideas for booby traps. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. Somebody mentioned I'm certainly not prepared to let it go, and that is the subtle of it. <laughs> this has been the most wretched day of my entire life. And I, I can assure you all, heads are going to roll. You're not going to give us a bad review, are you? A bad review? That's the least of your troubles. I should be suing this entire business and taking you for everything. What oh, crap kind of... Amateur hour are you running here? What sort of shab have you got? Oh, let's not make any rash decisions, Mrs Middlewich. If you know me at all, you'll know full well that once my mind has been made up, there's nothing much can be done to change it. Well, there must be something. Well, a nice massage, maybe. Not a chance in hell of any of you lot coming near me. Well, well, there must be something. Well, now you come to mention it, um, there is something you can do. It might sort of curb my angst a little bit. Well, what, whatever you'd like, Mrs. Meadowitch. Just, just tell us what it is. What I would like is for you to fire this incompetent wretch at once. <laughs> Is, is that really necessary, Mrs. Middlewich? Is it absolutely necessary? After what she's put us through? We know she's made a mistake, but that's all it was, a simple, honest mistake. Right, I appreciate it. it's caused you an inconvenience. I can't just insist you get fired. I can, and I am, and it's not open to debate. I'm afraid the review you'll be getting will inevitably be zero stars, and there's no good pretending otherwise. But I've every mind to sue Hummingbird House for everything, and, and if that stupid, stupid girl, unless that stupid, stupid girl is not dismissed with immediate effect, and that's my last word on it. Well, I'm sure if we just talked about it. It's okay. Really. She's right. It's all my fault. <laughs> no use you're getting into trouble before, because of me. You've all been very kind to me. I'll go get my coat. We can't let you do this, it isn't right. I agree, but have you got any bright ideas? Do you know what? I think maybe I do. Just follow my lead. Just mean trust me. Thank you for the opportunity, Miss Geraldine. I'm sorry I let you down. I'll see myself out. Don't forget which way the door opens, will you? <laughs> Hold on a second, Rhonda. It's no good trying to change my mind. I'm in no mood. I wouldn't dream of it, Mrs. Middlewich. I was just wondering. How did you spend all that time outside? I don't know what that's got to do with anything, and anyway, it's none of your business. <laughs> well, if you don't feel like telling us, I suppose we can always just check for ourselves. You see, as part of the all-new security procedures, we <laughs> have a couple of covert cameras covering the outer door, and absolutely everything that happens out there gets recorded. Isn't that right, Ralph? What? <laughs> oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, what of it? We've already seen you and Mr Shuttleworth, oh, is it Edward here, enjoying rather more of each other's company than one might expect. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what they're talking about, Fiona? Uh, Mrs Middlewich? <laughs> I have no idea. They, they seem to be implying that we're having some sort of, I don't know, a fair or something. Oh, preposterous suggestion. Oh, ridiculous, isn't it? I don't know where they get these ideas from. <laughs> it's an absurd suggestion. Yes. Nonsensical. It's almost comical. Quite. Mm. Mm. I think you know exactly what we're referring to. You two are busted. <laughs> We've all seen the footage. We've got it recorded in full high definition. And we can pan around and zoom in. And we've got multiple backups hidden in various locations around the <laughs> world. <laughs> so it would be a terrible shame for 
for your readers to learn that such an upstanding and trusted member of the community as yourself was actually committing fragrant acts of infidelity. Yes, it would be a terrible shame for them all to find out, not to mention, of course, your husband. You can't do anything. It's client confidentiality, not. I know my rights. Well, you know what you always say, Mrs. Middlewich, there's no harm in bending the rules from time to time. <laughs> what do you want? Well, I'm sure granting Wanda here a reprieve would be a very pragmatic gesture now, wouldn't it? Oh, it's a very pragmatic gesture, almost magnanimous in nature. Indeed. Plus, of course, we shall look forward to reading a five-star review about how relaxing hummingbird house is, paying special mention to the friendly front of house staff and the exemplary health and safety standards. That last bit's important. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous, I should do no such thing. Very well, Mrs. Middlewich, have it your own way. Well, how would my email have been different? Can I just attach it like this, right? Oh, yes. Uh, do we have a husband's email address on record anyway? Yes, I'm sure we have it from last time. It's under her emergency contact details. Ah, here we are, look. Yes. I tell you what, I'll read it out, you type it in. So, so Bernard. <laughs> all right! I'm sorry. I said all right. A five star review it is. Though I've never heard anything so absurd in all my life. Anything else while I'm at it, you hateful <coughs> creatures? Uh, I guess if you could just drop the phrase far for the course into the review, that would be great. <laughs> Don't push it. No, fair enough. <laughs> this isn't the last you turn Oh, somehow I think it probably will be. Play nice, Mrs. Middlewich, and I'm sure we can make all that incriminating evidence disappear. I am going to go and get dressed, and then I shall be on my way. I pray I never have the misfortune to encounter any of you awful people ever again. Here, let me help you. It's this way, I think. Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, does this mean I get to see Miss Geraldine? Well, you've not exactly covered yourself in glory today, Rhonda, but I suppose there's no real harm done. Yes, you can stay. Yes! <laughs> oh, thank you. No one's ever been this kind to me. I can't believe I lasted a whole day! <laughs> yes, let's just make, the, make sure there's no more mistakes then, <clears throat> shall we? Oh, I promise, Miss Geraldine, no more mistakes. Good. Now, team, I have to head out a little early today. You know how it is, meeting to attend. Oh, you can handle the lock-up, can't you? Yes? Good. Well, uh, uh, I'll be in my office if you need me. Oh, thank you. I can't believe you stuck your necks up. Oh, well, we said we'd have your back. Oh. Just remember what Geraldine said. No more mistakes or pressing wrong buttons. I'm not sure I can be doing with any more of this kind of drama. I promise. I don't think I can mess up anything else that badly. <laughs> What's that noise? It's coming from the time bed control. <laughs> Somebody been messing with these settings? No, with everything that's happened, I've not had a chance to even look at it. Well, neither have I. I've not touched anything. <laughs> Something's definitely amiss, though. Well, don't look at me. I definitely haven't got this one wrong. The only time I used it was when we thought that we were locked in. Mr. Buchanan thought he might as well top up his tan anyway. Well, that was ages ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about Mr. Buchanan. What ever happened to him? Actually, Thinking about, I haven't seen him since he went in there. But I definitely got it right. I did everything that Miss Geraldine said, put it on for four minutes and set it to the male preset mode. Again, I, I almost hesitate to ask this, but which button did you press exactly, Rhonda? The one that says him. <laughs> there is no button that says him. Yes, there is. There, top right. That's H slash M. Oh, what does that do? Changes the time setting between minutes and hours. <laughs> you put the bloody thing on for four hours. <laughs> now, what? You know you did a full search of the building and you looked in the tanning room? Yes. Did you look on the tanning bed itself? <laughs> I can't hear him. Oh, this isn't good. What are we going to do? <clears throat> what we always do in a situation like this, Rhonda, deny everything, accept no responsibility. <coughs> you! That's a powerful you. 
bir şeyi. <gülüyor> Tabii o var sanki. Do you want to get the door open? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's very nice in there. I think I might have fallen asleep. Was I really getting there for four minutes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, the door's open, I think I'll call it a day. I was going to get changed. Now, don't be checking out the bums as I walk out, will you girls? <laughs> we won't. <laughs> no, Mr. Buchanan. Yes, love? Uh, you're still wearing the sunglasses? What? Oh! <laughs> so I am. Good job you told me after all. I don't look completely stupid <laughs> now. What time are you making? Uh, about ten o'clock. You reckon is it time for the morning fire alarm test? Will it annoy Mrs. Middlewich? Probably. I think. Squeak. That's important. Let's try again. Let's try again. <laughs> 